I was about 15, 16, younger than I should have <laughs> But um, uh, yeah, it was one of those things where you are, I think everybody who is like a film guy or girl or a person is, um, goes through some sort of stage of just what I call their education, where you cram in as many films as you can. And particularly at that age, I just wanted to sort of ingest everything. And uh, But to be honest, at that point, I, I sort of stuck with quite mainstream films, as I suppose you do in that age. I kind of came up in the sort of Spielberg-led genera- uh, era of sort of Jurassic Park and things like that. So that was your diet of whatever was on the, the local cinema. And um, I got into these films that were on late night on BBC Two, and, and uh, Pop Fiction was the one that stood out for me. I, I, there were obviously, uh, as people often delight in saying, there's lots of films that did what that film does that, that have come before that, but it was the first time I'd seen it. It was the first time I'd seen you know, uh, rooting for characters that weren't necessarily good people, uh, stories told out of sequence, um, dialogue leading the film rather than the, the dialogue sort of just being a conversational rather than leading the plot along, you know, and now we get to this next part. So it just I became fascinated with it. The style really kind of just just uh, connected with me in some way and I've, I've kind of been a huge fan ever since and uh, I think um, for years people used to ask what my favourite film was and I used to say, well, how long have you got? Because, you know, you there's so many films you love for so many different reasons, but I think I found myself more often saying, you know, pop fiction than uh, the work of Quentin Tarantino. Well, he was making the, with, with Reservoir Dogs. I, you know, believe he was making the film he could make on with the money he was given, the talent he was given. Harley Patel really was the only huge name at that point, having worked with Scorsese. I think I, think I might be wrong, but. Um, uh, you know, there were following that there were people queuing up to you know, to, to be involved, and uh, you know, I went to a Q and A with John Travolta recently, and he said he took uh, sort of union scale for the role of Vincent Vega because he knew it was re- it would reboot him. He knew getting this uh, this young, exciting director would take him in a new direction, and I think there's a very interesting thing in any. Uh, director's career where they suddenly achieve prominence and suddenly they've for so long been working with what they've got and suddenly all of the toys are out of the wardrobe as it were. And they can work with anything and I think that's very interesting if you see the recent Godzilla film going, Gareth Edwards going from working on a 30 day trial editing software to the most sophisticated CGI labs available and whatever you think of the film, it's interesting to see where a director goes with that once all those limitations are taken off. There's something about me that's quite excited about that. It, it depends on the last two films, really. Yes, yeah. um, I, I quite like the, there's so many, um, I was lucky enough to meet him once and interview him and it was for uh, Inglourious Bastards and he, he put it quite a little bit um, rude, more rudely than this, but he commented about how as directors get older, their films become uh, maybe a little less enthused, a little more less urgent, and he didn't ever want to do that. Um, and he would always wanted to, you know, make the films he wanted to make. And I think I would rather have that than have the 20th film from Quentin Tarantino be going through the motions, whatever you think of his recent output, whatever you think of his films in general. Um, I have no doubt that these are the films he wants to make, and I quite like that. And uh, uh, if that means, you know, I'd love to have the next 30 years of films that have affected me as much as pop fiction, but if he wants to call it a day at 10, I have no problem with that. We always talked about a war movie. Um, I, I don't, I don't know, I suppose we haven't got his bosses. Um, <laughs> uh, but I, I think I, I, I liked his, you know, Glorious Bosses, I, I like him in that genre. Um, I think maybe Westerns, 
we've sort of done said all that needs to be said in the Western genre. I don't know. I, I, whatever he feels is um, it, it makes him excited to make movies again. Maybe horror. Yeah. That'd be quite exciting. Yeah. Um, who knows? As a career trajectory, John Travolta, I think it's easy to remember at that point, he was sort of face to his own admission, was facing the third Look Who's Talking film. He was that guy from Dirty Dancing and Saturday Night Fever. He'd had some success afterwards, but not much. And uh, after that, you know, sort of things like Arrow, Face Off, he became, you know, pe 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 he became a good idea again. Matthew McConaughey would say, and um, I, I think that's probably had the be biggest impact, the best performance. I, I don't think I've ever seen Uma Thurman better than when she's being directed by Quentin Tarantino, personally. It's an interesting argument because I can see both sides. Um, the people on the other side of the digital versus celluloid argument will argue that people with the means of Quentin Tarantino can afford to be picky about it, can afford to have uh, a preference, whereas someone you know, who just wants to get their film made, uh, digital's the easiest way to come across it. Um, in terms of his ardent nostalgia, he still tapes films off of the telly with VHS <laughs> instead of using uh, you know, a Spy Plus or whatever the American equivalent is. Um, I think that's just part of the character, I think it's part of the, the myth-making of who he is. So a fan like me, you know, I look on that very affectionately. Yeah. Um, I don't think, you know, him or uh, Christopher Nolan necessarily going to stop that movement of the, toward digital film. Um, but I do welcome the uh, ability, you know, I, I think we're in, a, we're in an era where anything is possible. Uh, you can make any type of film you want to make, and with an infinite number of formats. So why can't we have all of them? You know, if if you do want to go and see a 70 millimeter version of the Hateful Eight, which I did, um, <laughs> I've got the program and everything, and um, that that option should be available. I think you know you can watch 2D, 3D. Uh, why not? I I, I think. It, it, we are certainly now in an era with cinemas where people are saying, I will pay a little bit more to have a nicer experience. So, um, yeah, I think it should, that those options be available and still be available from uh, artists you want to hear from, and yeah. why not? I think it, 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 he's always got interesting things to say. I think there are um, things that uh, that you know, we can run towards progression in movie making, um, or filmmakers can, uh, and I can criticise them for it. Uh, but the, the, the it's always good to have a, a dissenting voice, a, a voice that grounds us within tradition, within uh, the way things were done. Um, I don't necessarily think he'd quit directing altogether. I personally think he'd probably do uh, something in terms of an epic storytelling into like a, a limited series, something with HBO, something it's similar to what uh, Steven Soderbergh did with The Nick. Uh, you know, he left the, the process of filmmaking, the industry of filmmaking, and moved into more long-form storytelling. I think he'd probably do that. I don't think you can keep him away from storytelling. Um, uh, whether it's, you know, he's talked about writing novels mm -hmm. as well. Uh, so that perhaps would be the, uh, the avenue you go down. I, yeah, I, 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 why not? I think, you know, Francis Ford Coppola always is more or less retired, but you see him turn up and make really astute observations, uh, as he should, you know, as one of the more celebrated filmmakers of the last, you know, of the last century. And, um, so why not, I think, uh, opinions, whether you agree with them or disagree with them from someone <coughs> from his, of his uh, calibre, of who is as well respected, uh, always worth hearing.